Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will talk about the interesting topics of C Sharp, that is C Sharp game programming. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So, if you're a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. So, in this C Sharp game programming tutorial, we'll make an endless T Rex runner game. So, to begin, let us define the T-Rex Endless Runner class game. The Google Chrome Dinosaur game, also known as the Chrome Dino, is a browser game developed by Google and integrated into the Google Chrome web browser. The player must guide a pixelated T-Rex across a side-scrolling landscape to a higher score, avoiding obstacles. The game was created back in the year 2014 by Chrome user interface designers and it is intended to be accessed by pressing the space bar while Google Chrome is closed or internet connectivity is lost. Let's create a T-Rex endless game runner in a Windows application. Here is the preview. So we have our T-Rex that has the animated running. We jump over the obstacles by pressing space button and get the score accordingly. After that, we can press T to continue or restart the game. So let's get started with T-Rex endless running game code. The system line indicates that you utilize the system library in your project. This provides useful classes and functions such as console class and write line function or method. Then a generic collection is strongly typed. It can only hold one type of object to eliminate runtime mismatches and improve performance by avoiding boxing and unboxing. Following that is the system. The component model includes classes and implementing components and controls runtime and design time behavior. The following system data enables an object to implement a data adapter and represent a set of methods and mapping action related properties used to fill and update a useful data set and update a data source. The system.drawing namespace contains the classes that comprise Microsoft Next Generation Graphics Architecture, that is GDI+. As a result, we have a system.classes and an interface are provided by support link queries. The following is a system. The class describes as some classes represent ASCII and Unicode character encodings, abstract base classes for converting blocks of characters to and from blocks of bytes, and a helper class that manipulates and formats string objects without creating intermediate instances of string. Then there's a system.threading. The task provides types that makes writing concurrent and asynchronous code easier. Finally, we have a system.windows. Windows forms as graphical user interface class library framework for the internet. Its primary goal is to provide a simple interface for developing desktop, tablet, and PC applications. It is also known as WinForms. Then we have the namespace T-Rex runner followed by the form name T-Rex1. First, we have a false variable which has a data boolean and is used to determine whether or not the player is jumping. This is a boolean expression called jump. This boolean will be used to determine whether or not the T-Rex has entered the game. We can only toggle between true and false. Next, we have a jumping speed of 10. This integer is known as jumping speed. This will have a value of 10. The T-Rex runner will jump 10 pixels from the current location and use the jump speed as gravity to pull the player down. Following that, we have the FRC variable equal to 12. This integer FRC will be used to determine how quickly the T-Rex jumps up and how high he can go before collapsing. Next, there will be an integer variable called the score. The score of this game, which will describe the score of the game, which is set to zero by default. After that, we set int object speed to 10. This is the default speed for the obstacles. The obstacles will be animated using this integer. This will draw the obstacles to the left of the screen closer to the player. The random variable comes next. We made a new class at random. This random number generator is also known as random, which is used to calculate the random location of the obstacles spun once in the game begins and when they reach far to the left of the screen. Following that, we have the POS variable or the position variable, which defines the T-Rex's position. Finally, we have the game over the true boolean variable which is by default set to false and indicates whether or not the game is over. 
following that we have the t-rex1 function which includes the initialized component function in visual studio.net c sharp or vb.net the initialized component method is a method that is automatically created and managed by the windows forms designer and defines everything you see on the form everything you do on the form in vs.net with designers generates the code next we have the main function of the form called the reset function this means instructing the reset function to execute when the game begins which will define in greater detail later next we have a trx game event linked to the game timer first we connected the jumping speed integer to the player picture boxes at the top of the screen and then we displayed the score on the score text label after that if the jump is true and the force is less than zero the jump is changed to false another condition states that if the jump is true the jumping speed should be minus 12 and the forces frc should be reduced by one otherwise the jumping speed should be 12. then we have the for each loop which is for the obstacle which we have two in this condition as if it is a picture box and it has an obstacle tag we need to move the obstacles to the left Another condition is that if the obstacles have vanished from the screen, we respawn them from the far right. In this case, we calculate the form width and the random number between 200 and 500, then add 1 to the score. After that, if the T-Rex collides with the obstacles, we stop the timer, change the T-Rex image to the dead one and display a message that says press T to restart on the score text label. And now that we know the game is over, we change from false to true. If the score of the game is greater than 5, we will increase the obstacle speed from 12 to 15 to make it a little more interesting. A following key is down event. In this function, we check if the space key is pressed and if the jump equals to false. We set the jump back to false. It may appear simple, but we are triggering the jump function which will be used later in the timer event. And the next function in the key is the up function. First, we check if the T key is pressed and released and then we run the game reset function. We also check if the jump is true and then we change the jump back to false. Finally, we have the reset function. Overall, this function will reset every variable, player and obstacle in the game. This function will be executed when the game first loads and then when the player presses the T button. Let's take a look at how to do it first set the variable that is frc variable to 12 and then set the jumping speed to 0 after that change the jump to false the gamer score to 0 the obstacle speed to 10 and score text to show the gamer score next set the t-rex image to running the game over variable gain to false and the t-rex stop to 367 again we have a loop for each of our two obstacles represented by a counter variable t in this for each loop, we have a same condition as T, which is that if the obstacle is a picture box with the tag of the obstacle and we generate a random number in the position integer between 500 and 800, we change the obstacle's left position to a random location at the start of the game. Now, let's quickly execute this program and see the output. So there you go. The program got successfully executed and you can see the game. Now press spacebar. Okay, let's press T. Now you have to hold the spacebar and make the jump. So again, let's press T. Press spacebar and hold it. So this is how the game is played. Now let's quickly close it. Now with that, we have come to an end of this session on game programming using C Sharp. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session or if you need the code that we executed in this particular session then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries at the earliest until next time thank you stay safe and keep learning hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here